In Egyptian mythology, Apophis was a serpent and the enemy of the sun god Ra. Every night, Apophis sought to bring eternal darkness to the world before being defeated by Ra at sunrise. Interestingly enough, it is also the name that astronomers have given an asteroid that is scheduled to do a flyby of Earth later this decade. Why name it after a malevolent deity? Well, the thing is that Apophis isn't your average asteroid. In 2004, the asteroid was given a 2.7% chance of hitting Earth in 2029, causing a great deal of media attention. While those statistics show that the chances of striking the Earth are marginal, the trajectory tells another tale. By 2029, Apophis will come close to Earth than our very own geostationary communication satellites that is close enough to come under the influence of Earth's gravitational pull. We can only guess what happens from there. But how likely is it that this collision really takes place? Is it just the base of some media frenzy, or is there something the scientific community is deliberately withholding? What we know, Neil deGrasse Tyson wrote this in Wired recently. One killer asteroid we've been monitoring is Apophis, which is large enough to fill the Rose Bowl. For Friday the 13th, April 2029, it will dip below the altitude of our communication satellites. If its trajectory on that day passes within a narrow range of altitudes, called the keyhole, then the influence of Earth's gravity on its orbit will guarantee that seven years later, in 2036, on its next trip around the Sun, the asteroid will hit Earth directly, likely slamming into the Pacific Ocean. The tsunami it creates will devastate all the coastlines of the Pacific Rim. If Apophis misses the keyhole in 2029, we'll have nothing to worry about in 2036. The main reason it is hard to predict until after 2029 is because of this very close encounter. If it flies past 20 kilometers further away in 2029, it will change its position in 2036 by 520,000 kilometers. Because of this sensitivity to such a close flyby in 2029, they will have a much better idea of what it will do 42 years from now after the 2029 flyby. In a study written before the 2036 impact was proved impossible, they found that adding 250 kilograms of solar cell material to its surface to absorb sunlight directly will be enough to change a hit to a miss. But unfortunately, it goes both ways. Any small fluctuations could result in a hit. Even though the chances of that are insignificant, they are nonetheless a possibility. It gives an idea of how sensitive it is because of that close flyby in 2029. A 2018 mission could easily have deflected it for 2036 and presumably could have made a huge difference for 2060, but we already know the chance for 2060 and later is very tiny, less than 1 in 100,000. This is where it is currently predicted to pass by in 2029 at a distance of 2.9 the 3.0154 Earth diameters, the red band shows the minimum and maximum distance for Apophis. The Earth is us, and the whole thing is drawn to scale. Geostationary orbit at far right of the purple square at 3.309 Earth diameters. If it hits, what are the effects? They don't expect it to hit in 2068 and are 99% certain that they sure it will miss. There are other potential hits calculated through to 2103, but those are even more improbable. And there is no way we are going to let it hit when it's so easy to deflect. But what happens if we just sit back and do nothing and it hits Earth? It's a small asteroid, only 370 meters in diameter. The closest I know to it is the study of a 200 meter diameter asteroid. They looked at the effect of an impact into the sea off the coast of Rio de Janeiro. An impact of a 200 meter asteroid angled 45 degrees with an impact speed of 20 kilometers a second and asteroid density of 3,100 kilograms could cause between 7.6 million casualties right next to the city, 2 million at a distance of 10 kilometers, and scaling down to 11,000 at a distance of 300 kilometers according to the same study. The tsunami is only 4.3 meters high in their model, and it doesn't matter much how far out the impact is so long as there's a slowly sloping continental shift as impact in deeper water creates higher waves. But then those models change due to distance as they approach the shore. If it hits the middle of a deep ocean, not unlikely, it would cause a tsunami, but it might not propagate very far. Asteroid impact tsunamis behave differently from earthquake ones because the impact it displaces the water, but then leaves a hole in the ocean, which the sea then would rush back to fill. A tsunami is caused by an earthquake that permanently displaces a large patch of the seabed upwards or downwards, or some similar event, and produces stronger waves. If it hits on land, it would create a large crater, as a rough guide, the crater is 10 times the diameter of the asteroid 
and that could kill millions of people if it landed in or near a city. If it landed in a remote place, the effects could be minimal, and much of the land area to this day is still desert or ice or uninhabited by humans. It would not have been a long-term global effect and is too small for an impact winter, evacuating the impact zone. All that is assuming that nobody is evacuated from the impact zone and they don't deflect it. However, with the Pactus, they would know about it probably several decades in advance. Surely, it is almost impossible that they don't deflect it in this scenario with the technology they would have by the 2040s. We could do it already. Perhaps, though, they wanted to impact for some reason? To study the effects of such an impact in the ocean or a remote desert? If for some reason it wasn't deflected, there is no way the people stay there in the impact zone. They would leave it well before the impact. Probably the death toll would be zero unless some foolhardy people ventured close up for a selfie with the impact. Or such which, come to think of it, that's not very far-fetched. Great opportunity to send a probe to study in 2029. There are plans to send a probe, perhaps a small satellite or else a NASA discovery mission to study Apophis during this close flyby. It will be a major opportunity because it comes so close to Earth that it passes close to the Roche limit, where it would be torn apart at 18,381 kilometers above the planet's surface. It won't tear apart, but the spin rate and axis will shift, and some of the surface will be churned up by the encounter, exposing fresh material. It's an ideal time to send a probe to look at a moderately sized asteroid close-up during such a close encounter. So what does the future look like? No, it is not known now if it will miss. This is Apophis that you're talking about. The predictions were gradually refined. It is now known it might hit us before 2060, and the chance of an impact that is also minute but is still a likely outcome. This outcome may be closer to the truth than we may know because David Thelane from the University of Hawaii has noted decisive changes in recent observations of the asteroid. He and his team have followed its orbit and found that Apophis is no longer following the expected trajectory. Their new calculations show that the asteroid is drifting away from a purely gravitational orbit by around 170 meters per year. Over time, this causes the asteroid's trajectory to shift more and more, enough to keep the impact scenario for 2068 in play, meaning that we might just get to see what killed the dinosaurs. But let's hope that it doesn't come to that otherwise. Apophis would be a very prophetic name as it's a nod to a mythological darkness and destruction. So there you are, guys. I hope this video offers you some good insight. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more content like this. And as always, thanks for watching.